Good day, all. Ira Epstein of Lunar Associates with your financial market wrap-up for this Tuesday, and we're now on the 17th of September, 2019, just in front of 4.15 p.m. Central Daylight Time. I, I can't get this out of my head. You know, on it's TV, you hear that commercial, oh, 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 it's magic, and I do have the world's worst voice. But, crude down, Suddenly we're hearing now out of Saudi Arabia, and they were the ones hit, and we're hearing from the prince that took over the energy ministry, that he expects they'll be fully back in operation on everything, back to normal by month end of September. Then we just hear it's gonna take weeks to months, maybe months, to rebuild buildings that they need really bad. I'm talking yesterday's news. 24 hours later, They've already got half of what was knocked out running. This is pretty important because if true, it shows their resiliency. That's number one. I wrote today that I'm bothered by something, and you should be. The Saudis just spent $68 billion on defense systems. Why didn't they work? Now the U.S. is saying, the U.S., not the Saudis yet, that those missiles came out of Iran and they're pinpointing the area, and that they were drones and cruise missiles. Again, I'm gonna repeat it. How good's our systems if they're buying U.S. systems, 68 billion worth, and we couldn't shoot down a cruise missile? I'm concerned. So I think there's more to this story than meets the eye, and I'm not saying we're getting bad news or fake news. I think we don't have all the facts just yet, and that's important. But in the energy markets, you were even lower than this right into the end of the day, is the API showed a net build of near 4 million barrels, and they were not looking for anything like that. So that's a bit bearish. The stock market is playing for tomorrow. Tomorrow is Fed Day. So at 1 o'clock p.m. Central Daylight Time, we get the Fed, FOMC as they call it, monetary policy announcement. The algos will take that and run with it. At 1.30 p.m., we get to see what Fed Chair Powell says. Remember, there's always a yin and yang. Because at a time sequence, your markets in Asia really aren't yet fully operational and going. Don't get me wrong, electronic markets are, but people sleep, then they wake up. And in Europe, that time's already eight at night, and most of their markets, people have gone home and they're, they'll, they'll react to the market in the morning. So that's what you get. The gold market, silver market, up a little bit today. The dollar weaker, in fact, a lot weaker if you look at the gain in the euro versus the gold. So that is something you have to do some thinking about. What is going on? And my antenna, let's call them, have been to the point that I am saying, and I've been saying it on TV, you know, Europe is getting to the point where they're throwing the QE at the market. We're begrudgingly lowering interest rates as we don't want the U.S. rates to get if you will, out of whack with Europe and some other areas to keep, if you will, dropping their rates so we have to drop ours. I don't know that that's bullish or bearish to dollars, so it gets interesting there. When we look at a weekly area chart of closes, we're at 30.05, 20 points away from the all-time high close on a weekly basis. Now, I looked at the monthly chart just a moment ago, and on the monthly chart, if the month were to end right now, this would be a new high monthly chart close. Interesting. When we look at the daily bar chart, I'm going to back off. I want you to look at this break low here to Monday's low. That was Monday, right through there. That's Friday. You had a gap in the chart. You went up today and you filled the gap in the chart. Gaps often get filled. So I don't know where we're at in terms of that. I do know the swing line is still bullish. You've got clearly higher lows. You see them higher highs. And the swing line always looks at the line, the bar in front of it, and it looks at five different variables as to how it draws it. Is it a higher high day, a lower and low day, an outside day up, down or an inside day, and it looks at the closing prices of each. So that's up. You break the uptrend in the pattern of higher highs, higher lows if you take out 29.8350 
which about 24 points away in round figures. You can see how the market has stayed over the 18-day average of closes, which is over the 100, which is over the 200. A bullish setup, yet a bullish crossover and made new highs already. And what the market's done is that it hit the upper bowl and Germain has backed away from it. And now the question is, can the market resume the uptrend? So far, this is the market that doesn't die. And the breaks in stocks, each time the market has broken so far, the market comes down, finds its support. It's been finding it at the 200-day moving average and has come back up with a vengeance. I keep reading that the indicator after indicator, according to other traders, are portending a recession and that this is a market top. I don't see it yet. When you come to the slow stochastics, that's this line. It's embedded, which means pullbacks in the market until the red line closes under 80 are being bought and the market is looking for higher prices. That's the simplistic way to explain that. In the NASDAQ, you had intraday loss today, the embedded reading, and it came back by day's end. Now, admittedly, the market's fudging around here, trying to figure out, can it break it down? What would surprise these markets tomorrow? What, what would surprise them is no quarter point cut. That would take the market by surprise, as would a half point cut. So the market is baked in, like 90% probability, quarter point cut for tomorrow. As long as it gets what it wants, will the market be able to rally further? And if it does, the resistance could be the upper Bollinger Band at 80, 32 and a quarter. When we come to the Dow, same story, the embedded reading, the pattern of higher lows higher highs. You're having trouble at the upper Bollinger Band, this black dashed line as you should. It's an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within it 95 percent of the time. You want the market to exceed the top and the bottom from time to time. More times than not, after a stall, the first time you come back and hit the band, be it at the low end or the high end, it's a resistance point on the top, a support zone on the bottom. In the Russell, you have the embedded reading. So these small cap stocks have caught on because there's the thinking of some immunity from world chaos with them. And the market has been doing okay. Did it give back some gain today? Absolutely. Had a good day yesterday, gave back some of the gain. Take out this 1568.90, and you could put in the question, how deep a break could you form if that occurred? Can you get to these numbers? What's the big difference in this chart than the others? Look at the positioning of where the 18-day average is on each of these charts compared to the Russell. It's under the 200, the 200's under the 1. It's not as bullish a setup as the other. In fact, it's not, as the moving averages go, it's really not a bullish setup. In the VIX, you're still dropping down with lower highs, lower lows. You have an embedded reading. That tells me that until that reading is lost, this market is still looking for stock indices up as what? The insurance premiums come out of this market. That's what that thinking is. When we come to the bond market, you have an oversold market. You've had a heck of a correction going into this FOMC meeting. You realize you were up here in the 167, 168 zone. You fell 10 basis points. That really put premium back into these markets. Now you're starting to get the bounce in them. Still in a bearish trend, but you're getting the bounce in them. The same in the 10-year note, oversold a large price break going in, the market rode the lower Bollinger Band, but there's nothing on this chart that's looking any longer like these markets want to get in a 10-year under the 1-4 range. In fact, it looks like a top has formed in the market and that while the Fed's doing things, we may be walking out of this thinking maybe it's September and done. Don't know, but when you read the chart, it's not bullish. And bullish would mean yields dropping. TLT, it's the same thing. So I get a different feel in these markets. I get a feeling that, yeah, you might get a rally after the Fed, but the bigger picture is looking bearish, not bullish. The dollar index is a mess. It's now, what, nine or 10 days in a row where it just keeps hitting the 18-day average. Now, in all fairness to this market, 
If you take out today's lows tomorrow, 97, 73 and a half, you'll initially have then lower highs. You already have the lower low. That could set the market off to the downside. What about the upside? Well, if you had an outside day up, yes, but you'd first have to take out today's low in order to do that. So I don't know what you have, but I'm inclined to think it's more bearish than bullish. It's the reverse in the euro. Notice how the market's fighting to get up here and it finished the day at 111.14. The 18 day average is 111.34, so it's still under that. But if you get over today's high, which was 111.47 and a half, you already have the higher high. That could give you higher lows and the higher high, and that could be bullish. So gotta be on your toes tomorrow to see how this is playing out. In the British pound, right now they are arguing in front of, and I don't want to give you the impression now because uh, we're at four o'clock, that's 10 o'clock at night or so in, in, in the UK. But now being the days, they have the next two days, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday to uh, fight the battle in front of the Supreme Court as to whether or not Parliament was wrongly called out of session and they should be called back in or if Prime Minister Johnson was within his right to prorogate. I don't know. I do know the resistance is the 100 day average in the 18th. So if I throw this off the chart, I see an embedded reading, it's bullish. I see the uptrend, it's bullish. I see the market riding the upper Bollinger Band. And I do think that the traders will be looking at that combination of the 100 day and the upper Bollinger Band as some resistance tomorrow. In the Japanese yen, it's bearish. I mean, if you think about the fear phenomena we had as we were 144, 142 in interest rates, and you shot up here, and how much you've given back, was that it? In Bitcoin, talk about being stuck in the middle of no man's land. You're there, you're just riding that 18 day average of closes. You're not getting any clues. Momentum is going flat, price is goes with lower highs, lower lows, and then suddenly it developed higher lows. I could argue you got lower highs, higher lows, and you're just riding that 18 day average. In the accrued, look at how much premium came out today. You took out 80 cents of premium on this market from yesterday. Look at a differential yesterday, you were at 635, you're 545, 90 cents. So as soon as we heard that the Saudis can get oil back online and that they've already booked four U.S. tankers, cargoes, to take oil wherever it's got to go to meet their commitments, plus what they're taking out in their other areas. And by month's end, they think they'll be refining back to right where they were. Wow, that took something out. However, I'm not going to change what I said. One strike could lead to two. And there's probably going to be, by the trade, a war premium built into uh, Brent crude over WTI. As you see on the pullback, yesterday you stay way up here over that uh, upper Bollinger Band. Here's the Bollinger Band right through here. Today you're right back under it. If you think you can trade that, God bless you. It's pretty darn hard, and you can ask that of the pros. Back under the Bollinger Band here, and you're not trending. You have a lower and low, higher high. You have a lower and low, higher high, and you're back in the bands. Uh, gasoline, right back into the band. So last night I'm telling my wife, I go, you gotta go fill up the car today. Cause in Chicago, Tuesdays are known as the best day to fill up in terms before they reprice the pumps. I'm going there talking 10, 20 cents. Not like it's a lot, it's $6 difference over what it would be, but that's what people are doing. Now I'm looking at this wondering, maybe I had her go on a false part, but at least I got a full car. Uh, looking at natural gas, you're starting to act like maybe you're finally getting to it. I can tell you Chicago weather, and you can't go by us, obviously, for nat gas. It's gorgeous. 72 degrees, you don't need an air conditioner or a heater, it's gotten beautiful. This weather is gonna to move to the East Coast. And at some point here, the people that will run out of this market, they'll be through running and the market will go back to the fundamentals. And I don't want you to think I'm overly bearish or bullish, I'm a chartist. The chart is still bullish until you take out 255.10 and or you lose the embedded reading, it's that simple. I talk about these indicators like they're second nature as you know to me, 
and they're not to you probably. There's a lot of you that like what we talk. I make it easy, but I want to teach. Teaching it to me is so important. So be a chart patterns. How do you draw these chart lines? How do you work with moving averages? Why are they so important? These different oscillators. Well, guides one and two to technical indicators are your primer. Then what I'm doing makes sense, and of course, if you take my course, my charting course, $179.95, you really learn this stuff. I mean, you learn the stuff because it's six hours of videos, and it's meant that each chapter builds on the next, and you don't move to the next chapter till you really understand what you've got. It's pretty simple stuff. I even hide the name of the, uh, what the chart is for a while, and then I bring it back. How do you get all this information? Go to our website. It's full of everything. If you want this guide to technical indicators, just click free offers. You'll see everything we offer for free there. Click up here, by the way, if you're watching me on YouTube, it'll take you there as well. I'm Irapstein. You have a great day. We'll be talking about the FOMC tomorrow. Take care now.